number two, Help Me Tread. Help me tread in the path of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. I am putting all my trust in Thee. Oh, lead me, O oh Lord. Come on, lift your voice and sing it out. I need you to lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot pray. Lord, let me walk. Each day with this, lead me on. Come on, lift up that last verse. I am lost. I am lost if you take your hand from me. I am blind without thy light to see. Lord, just always let me thy servant be. Lead me. Come on, put your hands together. Lift your voices wherever you are. Oh, lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, oh Lord. Come on, I need you to lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead, Lord, let me walk. Lord, let me walk. Lord, let me walk. I need you to help me to walk, Lord. Lord, let me walk. Each day with thee, oh, lead me, oh, lead me, oh Lord, oh Lord, lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Amen. Lead me, guide me along the way. Amen. We are. So glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. We know that we have experienced and have dealt with significant loss in our congregation. We thank everybody for tuning in for the homegoing services of Brother Clark. And we know that we got Sister Ortiz coming up. The season that we're in of fasting and praying has taken on, for me, new meaning because of the amount of difficulty we find ourselves dealing with and the amount of circumstances that require prayer. Fasting, we come to a point where not only should we continue to pray for encouragement of our congregation, but we want to continue to pray for protection and for healing and for God to continue to search and touch those areas where we find ourselves deficient. And as we conclude uh, our journey through this time of prayer and fasting. Today is the last day. We'll conclude with our prayer at 6 o'clock tonight. My hope is that God has spoken to all of us in deeper ways and that we have re recommitted ourselves to the work and task at hand. And so thank you for serving one another in meaningful ways during 
periods and times of loss. Thank you for calling one another and checking in on each other. I am so glad that we have a church community that cares for one another and that prays for each other. And so that is what church should be. That is what church looks like. And we're grateful to be a part of it. As we prepare our hearts and our minds to come back to worship in house, and as we prepare our hearts and minds for installing our new officers and new offices, we are grateful for the calling of God. And then we're also grateful for the response of the saints. And we're grateful for their willingness to say yes. And we're grateful for the confidence that the saints will put in our leaders and for the perspective of stewardship of our leaders, realizing that nothing that we do is ours, but we do it to serve the betterment of the people and him. And so as we prepare to cross over our Jordan and into God's promises for us, my hope is that you would be encouraged, that you would be strengthened by his word, even during this time where it seems that there is a lot of loss. God is still on the throne. Amen? And we are privileged, if you will, humbled to be a part of his kingdom. There is a hope in being and knowing the Lord, a hope that sustains, a hope that the world does not understand. But there's a deep joy that comes with walking with God. And so for that, we're thankful and we're grateful for it. We will, at this time, go to the throne in prayer led by Deacon Longaria, and as he comes to intercede on our behalf, I ask that you would keep him and his family in prayer and that we will continue to pray and lift up one another. Amen. Good morning, Mount Olive and Mount Olive viewers all over the world, wherever you are. Those that would like to come into our doors, we're going to try to open soon, so be ready for that, and, 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 and we would enjoy having you because we know there's a lot of churches that haven't been able to fare as well as we have, and we pray for those people that have lost their place to worship, and we ask that you uh, look into our doors and see how, uh, how, how you like our, our praise. I have a monster list here today, and as Pastor Page has said, we have lost a lot of members, and uh, it, is, it is really grieving our hearts. We regret to announce the death of Sister Hortense Marshall, a longtime member of Mount Olive. And we pray for Reverend Burt because she just recently, in the last few months, lost her father. We pray for Andre Perry, a former member of Mount Olive. And his funeral will be on Facebook Monday, 131, and it's going to be at Zion Baptist Church, 217 West Todd Street in Charlotte. I pray for Sister Margaret Griffith and family on the passing of her aunt, Novelle Seward, who will be funeralized on February 5th in South Carolina. The family of Brother John Dubow's funeral was last week. The family of Brother Bobby Clark funeral was yesterday. Sister Susan Scott and family, and the family of Bernice Reed of Shaker Heights, Ohio, a cousin of Deacon Dow. In addition to these these people that are mourning, and we ask you to pray for all of them because we know how difficult it is. We've all mourned, and we know that joy comes in the morning sometimes, and sometimes those mornings just seem to go on forever. I ask you to pray for the following people as well who need prayer. Sister Sherry Jones, who is in Alaris Health Care in, New Jer in Jersey City. Dwayne Elston. Sister Nettie Best Home in his need in prayer. Sister Vernell Nelson. Sister Sue Singleton, the mother of brother Chris Singleton. Brother Ernest Youngblood. 
Brother Al Singleton, Sister Lorraine Bogues, Sister Deacon and Deaconess Robinson, Deacon and Deaconess Burns, and I might add that the good news of that, this is Deaconess Burns just celebrated another birthday. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Sister Deborah Wilson Brown and her husband Rodney, Sisters Robin and Shelly Harper. Robin is home from the hospital. Sister Debbie Barr and family. Also added to the list today was Reverend Gail Bazemore, Christine Wade, Manuel Ludizaga, Lud and Valentina Rose Tucker, 19 months old. She is the granddaughter of Vanessa Jennings, and she is in West Orange ICU. Please note that we have included several numbers on the bottom of your screen as well that we need to pray for. So we pray for all of these people that are, this list seems to get bigger all the time, and we pray that it, it, it goes smaller. We also ask that when we have good news, that we can put it on this list as well, because we know that there are workings of the Lord where he takes care of situations, and he reverses this list, and he takes people off, and he heals people. We know that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is in the name of Jesus. We come together today to celebrate our elected officers of our church. We pray for those that, we, we, we honor those that have been giving this church a lasting opening from the beginning of COVID. They have worked tirelessly to keep this church open and running, where many churches have not been able to do that. We pray for the new leaders that have been elected, that they be blessed with the, with the fortitude to be able to continue in the footsteps of those who preceded them. I pray for the plight in the, of this disease, that it is nearing an end, or at least a turning point, so that we can continue to worship and come back together into this church. I pray for our country, our leaders, and the morals that are applied to the law of the land, how we express our love for others through our own constitution, as what we believe in how we, how we, how free nations should live and pray for the tense situations in the Ukraine. Heavenly Father, I ask for your defense, the drive, the drive of this one man. I pray for the members of so many churches that have not been able to keep their doors open. I pray that those members not be adrift and can't find their way back to the congregation of faith whether within the walls of a sanctuary or through an electronic means that they, will have, that they have gotten so accustomed to. When the pastor page opens the doors of this church, MOBC shortly, let them, be, let them step into our midst where we are waiting to keep, them, to keep them connected and not drifting into Satan's hands. Heavenly Father, I pray for those people that were on that bridge that collapsed I pray for and I thank you, Father God, for this very day that I have never seen before and I'm not aware of and how it will end. My connection to you through Jesus Christ is all that I rely upon for today. You, Father God, have taken us through a, 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 a fasting situation where we attempted to get closer to you. And we pray, Father God, that it has been a blessing for many. Bless those who are about to under, un, endeavor on the paths that they were called to, the fathers and father bless those who support this church with the purposes they were given. Keep us as only you can. Bless and strengthen the diaconate, the deaconesses, the trustees, the ministers, the pastor and his family, but most importantly, I ask that you bless and keep the prayer warriors of this Mount Olive Church. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. You are whatever you've been going through. God said the struggle is over for you. You've been in this place long enough. And your mountainside has been rough. The struggle is over for you. 
I don't know who this is for, but just remember these words. Wherever you are, whatever you've been going through, God says the struggle is over for you. You've been in this place long enough and your mountainside has been rough. The struggle is over for you. Can I sing that one more time? Wherever you are, whatever you've been going through, God says the struggle is over for you. You've been in this place long enough and your mountainside has been rough the struggle is over for you you've been in this place long enough and your mountainside has been rough the struggle is over for you. You've been in this place long enough, and your mountainside has been rough. The struggle is over for you. It's good to be reminded that what we do endure and go through struggle, that God is right there with us. And he can see our way through. And when we get to the other side of going through, it's where we experience significant joy. Amen? It is now time in our worship experience where we all have an opportunity to participate, and that is in the giving of our tithe and our offering. Amen. There are multiple ways that you can give. You can go to the church website and give there. You can download Givelify from Apple or from the Google Play Store. Search for Mount Olive Baptist Church at Hackensack, New Jersey and you can give there. You can also send in your tithe and offering to the address that we have posted. You can give there, or you can be traditional, and you can drop your check off at the church. where The address is posted there as well. We, in this community, believe in God and his word, and we believe that tithing is an act of obedience for God. Amen? And so we want to encourage you that if you have not started tithing yet, that you would trust God at his word, that you would believe by faith uh, with your finances in your giving. It is because of your generosity that we're able to serve so many in our community, that we're able to serve one another, and that we're able to do the ministry that God has called us to do. And so please, please continue to give generously. Father, we bless you for each and every gift. We thank you, Lord God, for providing resources, Lord God. We thank you that even though we find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic, that we're still able to be charitable and give, that we're still able to do ministry, that we're able, Lord God, because of you, because of what you've done, we are able, Lord, to trust in you and to multiply that which we give to you. 
Father, we recognize that you are the best and first giver of all things, for you gave us your son, Jesus. And for that, we are grateful. Now, God, bless each and every heart that we will give cheerfully and not tearfully. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. The people of God said together, amen and amen. Now, we will hear from the choir, amen. I always get excited when the choir comes and blesses our heart. And the next voice that you will hear after that will be mine in the form of a sermon. Amen. God bless you. We're so excited. Be encouraged. people of God said together, amen. amen and amen. If you have your Bibles and if you have been paying attention and following along with us, you'll know and 
recognize that we have been preaching through the book of Joshua and looking at how God has promised the congregation of Israel this wonderful land and watching their journey as they go into the unknown. And we last week preached while they were at the banks of the Jordan River. And, um, if you read the narrative, we understand that God made it possible for them to go through on dry land, and now they find themselves on the other side of the Jordan, getting ready to enter into their promise. And so we pick up at uh, that narrative and that era, that time frame, if you will, in Joshua chapter 5. Verse 13, it says this. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and asked him, are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Uh, then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. I want to preach this morning with this thought in mind, when God interrupts your plans, when God interrupts your plans. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the precious privilege it is to stand behind the sacred desk one more time that we may proclamate the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, we are so grateful for your word. We are grateful, Lord God, that every chance we get, we are able to hear from you just a nugget that will enable us, empower us, inform us, so that we can take on the wildness of this world. God, as this preaching hour has come, bless each and every heart, each and every mind, that your word would fall into our hearts and develop good roots so that we can produce fruit that is kingdom-minded. God, we thank you for each and every blessing you allow us to experience. Now, Lord God, have your way. Go over the airways. God, somebody might ask that question. What must I do in order to be saved? Answer that question by showing up and showing out. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. And the people of God said together, amen. And amen. If you've been following the NFL, you know that today that four teams will compete, that will battle it out so that the NFL can proclaim their Super Bowl champion. These teams, Cincinnati and Kansas City and San Francisco and and the Rams, they've all been playing very hard all season long. All season long, they have prepared themselves uh, in preseason with training. And during every week, they develop game plans, if you will, uh, plan strategies that will hopefully be implemented that they can execute that would lead them to victory. Uh, along the journey, I would assume that these teams have had many periods and points of growth, that they've made plenty of mistakes along the way. They've played in hot weather. They've played in cold weather. They've played when the sun is shining. They've played when it's raining. They've been cheered, and in a lot of cases, y'all, they've also been jeered. They've been 
disappointed, and in some instances they've been elated. Whatever they have gone through, it has led them to this place and this point of competing, y'all, for championships and victories they have had to endure all season long in order to get to a place where they can compete for something that is a champion. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to know this morning that champions aren't born, but champions are endure, endear made. They are a shining black king. Muhammad Ali once said that champions aren't made in the gym, but champions are made from something uh, that they have deep down inside of them. A, a desire, if you will, a dream, if you will, a vision, if you will. They, they have to have some skill, y'all. There has to be some talent there, but there has to be something more than just skill. In other word, skill will not take you to the mountaintop. There has to be something inside of each and every one of us that will allow us to endure, allow us to grow through those mistakes, allow us to adjust. Yeah, those, those teams have earned the right to battle for victory, battle for championship, but the, uh, the NFL, how the NFL has it structured, only one team can emerge as victory and as champion, and I can imagine that the team that emerges victoriously. It's the team that has planned, that has strategized, and the team that can make proper adjustments in the game plan. The coaches that lead these teams are responsible for coming up with a game plan that will lead the team to victory. Uh, uh, the coaches, yeah, they, they're responsible for coming up with game plans, and no matter what game plan they come up with, uh, they must be flexible enough in order to make adjustments that will lead their team to victory because invariably whatever game plan they have put together they are going to have to tweak and adjust it depending on what happens in the game and just like many of us whatever game plans we have put together whatever plans that we may start off the year with we have to be able to be flexible enough in order to pivot and make adjustments as necessary listening to the coach of our lives that is the voice of God I wish I had about five or ten of y'all who can identify with what I'm saying because invariably life is going to happen that's going to come up against your game plan, that's going to come up against any plan that you and I have put forth. And if we're not able to pivot, if we're not able to adjust, if we're not able to move when God says move, we'll find ourselves left behind and not in the championship game. Champions, y'all, are those those who are made, or those who can endure, those who can withstand, those who can walk, those who can last, those who can learn, those who can grow. That is a championship mindset. And depending on what happens, uh, we ought to be able to pivot and adjust uh, and listen to the voice of God who is our coach. Uh, and so in this text, we find Joshua uh, strategizing. He's the, the, the very first challenge, or second challenge, the first one was crossing the Jordan. The second challenge of Israel is found in the walled city of Jericho. Joshua is on the banks looking at the walled city, trying to figure out how are we, God's people, to take down this walled city? Uh, we are filled with farmers, filled with shepherds. There's no soldiers really among us. There are men who have capability of fighting. But we're looking up at the city that's on a hill. And the city that's on a hill is walled up. There's only one way in and one way out. And Joshua is sitting here trying to think how in the world God says move into this area, move into Canaan, move into the promised land. But we're looking at a fortified obstacle that we're not equipped to handle. How in the world are we to take down this giant when we ain't got the, the tools and the goods in order to do so. 
And so Joshua is strategizing, y'all. He's planning. He's calculating. He's thinking. He's trying to figure out how can we do this thing. And all of a sudden, a figure shows up. Uh, before Joshua, who is preparing for warfare, preparing to go into battle, before he goes into battle, a, another person shows up. Uh, and there's this divine conversation that takes place between this individual and the other person, or and Joshua. What then are we to glean from this conversation that should help us move forward and tackle the things that we need to tackle? How is it uh, that when God interrupts whatever plans that we have, that normally it ends up turning out better and for our good. Well, number one is this. First of all, don't be afraid of interruptions. Uh, so many of us make plans and, 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 and we're so concrete with our plans and if they don't go our way, then we end up breaking. But, but we ought to be flexible enough to, 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 to not mind some interruption, especially if it's God trying to change our course, trying to change our direction and give us a word for something else. The text says uh, uh, in 13 and 15, there's this conversation. And if we can ponder right there and what's going on, Joshua... At this time of his interruption, he's in the midst, y'all, of preparing for warfare. But before God takes him into battle, God has to spend some time with this young general. Lord, have mercy. Before Joshua goes into battle, God has to spend time with this young general. Four observation and things that take place in this exchange. Uh, the first one that takes place is there's an exclamation. Joshua, who had already been encouraged to, to be strong and courageous and had Israel in mind, was not startled by the suddenness of this appearance. Hmm. Nor is he daunted by this attitude of this figure. Uh, for Joshua, he was concerned for the people and their cause and was ready to go to war with this individual who was there. In other words, uh, the dude shows up and Joshua says, who are you? You don't belong to us. You ain't part of our clan. And then we see that there's an identification. It's interesting to note that the stranger doesn't say who he's there to fight. He responds by saying neither. But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have come in this declaration. The messenger declares that he is the captain of the Lord's army. Um, there was another theophany that happened with Moses. While he was on a mountaintop, God showed up to him at the burning bush. Uh, God promises Joshua that I will be with you just as I have been with Moses. God sends himself and says, I'm the captain of the army of the Lord. Um, periodically, God would do this. He would show up in the form of a man to Abraham. He showed up as a traveler to Jacob. He showed up as an angel to wrestle. Now he comes to Joshua as the supreme commander of God's army. Lord have mercy. He says, um, I am the captain of God's army. Not only that, but he showed up with his sword drawn. It's one thing to look the part. It's, a one, it's another thing to be ready to go to battle. Um, it's one thing for me to be dressed but it's another when God shows up and is ready to fight your battle. Uh, God has shown up for Moses at the burning bush and now he shows up to Joshua with a sword drawn. The Lord shows up ready to go to war. Lord have mercy. And then we see that there's adoration. Joshua responds to this identification by immediately, y'all, falling down in worship. Uh, 
How essential is it that before he stood fearlessly before the enemy, that he fell down prostrate before God, before going into battle? Uh, Lord have mercy. Joshua goes to worship before executing and strategizing. Joshua goes to worship. It's in worship that Joshua gets clear direction. It's in worship that Joshua gets clearance for what he needs to do. It's in worship that Joshua gets his marching order. See, Joshua had a plan, y'all, but he took his plan to worship, uh, and it's where worship, uh, that God begins to interrupt his plan. Uh, I wish I had about five or ten of y'all who understands that every now and then uh, before I gotta take on some battles, uh, battles of debt, uh, battles in my relationship, uh, battles with my children, uh, battles with my community, uh, battles in I got to go to worship. I got to live before God and wave my hands and say, God, I worship you. Before I execute any strategy, I got to lift up my strategy to God and go to worship in order. Uh, and then there's submission. Um, it was in worship that Joshua submits to instruction. Uh, for in verse 15, Joshua asks, what message does my Lord have for his servant? In the statement, Joshua has surrendered his office to God. He knew that he was called to lead Israel, but in this moment, he surrenders it all to the Lord. Uh, at this point, whatever strategy that Joshua had previously come up with, it was insufficient. Lord, have mercy. When God shows up, whatever plans that we had prior to is insufficient. Lord, have mercy. Uh, and he literally hands his plans over to the commander-in-chief God. Joshua might have been a strong leader and military general, but in private, he was a servant of God hearing from God, and getting God's strategy. The second thing we see in the text is that God's plan is far superior to ours. I love this. I love this narrative in Joshua chapter 6. We got to lay the foundation. Before we get to the victory at Jericho, we got to look at the time that Joshua spent with God. Uh, Ain't no victory in Jericho if there ain't no worship and time with God. God Almighty. Uh, look at, uh, the text says in, in chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, you have your Bible going, it says, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. They were scared. Y'all remember that from last week. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, then the Lord said to Joshua, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with this king and his fighting men. I have delivered, Lord have mercy, Jericho into your hands, along with the king and fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of rams, horns, in front of the ark on the seventh day. March around the city seven times, and with the priests, blowing their trumpets, and when you hear the long blast of the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, and the wall of the city will collapse, and the army will go up, and everybody will go straight in. That's God's plan. <laughs> Notice in the text that God takes over the strategizing. And he gives detailed instructions on how Joshua was to conquer the walled city, the impenetrable 
walled city of Jericho. Um, the strategy, at first glance, to me, seems absurd. Uh, you want us to walk around the city seven times. And on the seventh time, raise up a shout. And that obedience and that act is supposed to allow us to overcome this obstacle. Lord have mercy. Why would God instruct them this way? Um, not only are they given absurd direction, but there's no record of them grumbling or complaining about the instruction. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, if y'all remember the children of Israel when they were walking in the wilderness, that's all they did was grumble and complain. God, we're hungry. God, we're thirsty. God, we were better off in bondage. God, this. God, that. God, I don't know. God, I'm too this. God, I'm too that. God, I'm too big. God, I'm too black. God, I'm too white. God, I'm... Excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. God gives them instruction. He says, walk around this thing seven times. Um, maybe, y'all, they had learned that all the grumbling and unbelieving of the generation before them had done them no good. Um, maybe along the journey in the wilderness, they had learned to trust in God. Maybe on, on their journey, they had learned to follow his word. The obedience of the people then was due to their faith in the word of God. Faith, y'all, is believing that which God tells us, even when it seems ludicrous to do so. Lord, have mercy. Uh, Peter Jeffrey writes, that faith is not an irresponsible step into the unknown, but it was a, it's a reasonable obedience to the will and word of a sovereign and almighty God. Notice then that all Israel had to do, y'all, is walk around the city. Um, but they were to do it with specific instruction. In the front would be Joshua and the soldiers followed by the priest blowing and making sounds of warfare. Last but not least, the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God's presence, was to come up behind them in the rear. And they were instructed to march around Jericho once a day for six days and seven times on the seventh day. And on the seventh trip, on the seventh day, the priests were to play, elder, a long trumpet blast, which then would be a signal for the army of Israel and for the Israelites to shout. The Bible says that if you follow these instructions, then God said, I'll deliver Jericho. <laughs> into your hands. This one, something when God shows up and interrupts your plans and makes it easier than what you originally thought because you're able to adjust to the word and will of God. God says, if you follow these instructions, Joshua, then you'll be successful in your conquest against Jericho. And as we read the text, we discover that Israel followed these instructions, that they walked around Jericho seven times. These unskilled farmers, these unskilled soldiers, these 
people that did not have weapons of warfare. These people who were discounted and looked upon as those who were really weak and feeble. The only reason that they them is because they heard that God had done something for these people. These people were not people who were skilled in warfare, skilled in the things of war, but God says, I'm going to go in there and fight your battle if you follow my instruction, if you pivot and move when I move, if you do what I say, that which is a giant and standing in your way to your promises, I promise to you, that which is standing in your way has got to get out of your way. Why? Because I've instructed and given you victory. All you've got to do is be strong and courageous. Believe in my word. Don't go to the right or to the left and I will give you success wherever you go. The text says that the saints began to walk around Jericho seven times and on the seventh time that the trumpets began to blast and the folks lifted up a loud shout, a shout so great that the walls came tumbling down. Um, seemingly, ineffective means God seems to delight in strange methods. Uh, he enables Samson to have victory over the Philistines um, by wielding the jawbone of a donkey. He enabled David to slay Goliath using only a sling and a stone. Uh, centuries later, God selected an ordinary Jewish girl to bring his son into the world, selected a little town called Bethlehem as the place for him to be born. It seems that God delights in using ordinary things in order to get supernatural results. Um, God used the cross in order to get supernatural results. Uh, the cross that would prove to be a stumbling block to the Jews and a laughing stock to the Greeks. But th the Bible says to those who are saved, it is both the power and the wisdom of God. Saints, we might make plans. But give room for God to interrupt your plans. Uh, because if we can listen to the voice of God. His ways are not our ways. His mind, y'all, is not our mind. God will keep us in the palm of his hand. He can look into our future and give us exactly what we need. That's why some of us ought to thank God that he interrupts our plans every now and then. Because the reality is, if some of us would have carried out our plans, we might not be standing here today. But God has stepped in and has interrupted our journey that has brought us and led us here. You want to know why God's plans are always superior to ours? Well, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 and 10 says, uh, I am God, and there is no other like me. <laughs> I am God, and I am uh, declaring the end from the beginning uh, and from not yet done. This means that God always knows. He is the beginning and the end. He knows everything in between. The reason I trust God's plan is because he holds my future in the palm of his hand. Is there anybody in here that can trust God enough uh, with your life and your future? The Bible says, 
I am God. <laughs> there is no other like me. We serve a God, y'all, uh, that there is no other that is like. Uh, he is omnipotent. Uh, he is omnipresent. Uh, he is all powerful. Uh, he could be over there and over here. Uh, he could deal with your issue and my issue. Uh, is there anybody in here that can say, thank you, God, uh, that there is no one like you? Uh, you hung up the stars. Uh, you ring the valleys. Uh, you put the planets in place. Uh, you made mankind. Uh, you breathe breath into mankind. Uh, there is none like you. Uh, you healed my body. Uh, you delivered my soul. Uh, you touched my children. Uh, there is none like you. Bible also says Isaiah 55 verse 8. Bible says my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. The psalmist says in Psalm 33, 11, that the plans of the Lord, they stand firm forever. Uh, one of the reasons why God's plans are superior is because his thoughts are not our thoughts. And the way God does things is not the way we do things. God can take ordinary and multiply it and make it great. God took five fish and two loaves of bread, put it in his hands, broke it and gave thanks, uh, and end up feeding the multitude. God can take whatever and put it in his hand and bless it and do something with I wish I had about five or ten women who can testify when I put my life in his hands. Uh, God was able to... Not only that, but God's word also says, trust in the Lord. With all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You want to know why God's plans are superior? They are superior because when we trust in him, uh, and even when I don't understand, uh, I know that God has my best in him. Uh, I know that God has my best in his care. Uh, that if I can submit to him, uh, that he will uh, make my way straight, he will make my way narrow, and he will take me. Okay. You still need some more reasons on why God's plans are superior? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. Lord, have mercy. Uh, he says plans to prosper you. Uh, plans to not harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. Uh, saints, I wish that you understand that every now and then, uh, I've had some plans for my own life. Uh, I've had some plans that included trying to take my life out, uh, but God has showed up in a timely way uh, and says the plans I have for you, uh, plans not to harm you, uh, but plans to give you a future. The reason that God's plans are far more superior is because my plans are limited based on what I see, uh, based on my circumstance, uh, but God plans. He peeps into our future and says you have a life. You are victorious. Uh, uh, you want to know some more? Uh, uh, he says I am the Lord your God and I will fight your battles. God Almighty. He says the reason that God's plans are far more superior is because God knows all things. In other words, he knows that the fight has already been fixed. That if I am uh, endure enough and I can just withstand the blows of life, eventually I'm going to come up on top because I am a champion. I am victorious because I am with the Lord. God says, I will fight your battle. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Which means... That all my fights are fixed. Which means that if you are a betting man, you ought to put your money on my God. My God is able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. My God is able to heal and touch. 
those areas that are unsearchable. My God is able to pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. If you are a betting man, don't put your money on the enemy, but put your money on my God. My God has a perfect track record. He's never failed me, and he's never left me. He's never left me alone. My God. When God interrupts your plans, victory is assured. When God interrupts your plans, it is guaranteed that he'll fight your battles. When God interrupts your plans, he'll take you from over here and point you over there. When God interrupts your plans, he can navigate those troublesome waters. When God interrupts your plans, Lord have mercy. And so Mount Olive Baptist Church, as God is navigating us through these rocky waters, I don't mind being interrupted by his plans. I don't mind the obstacles we go have to face. God says, if you go to claim these promises, if you go step into this newness, if you're going to go to a higher level with me, rest assured, I have given you victory. But that don't mean that you don't have to fight. You're going to have to fight to claim what's yours. Fight for your family. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your security. Fight for your dreams. Fight for your rights. We're going to have to fight, y'all. If we're going to claim, we're going to have to fight our depression. We're going to have to fight negative thinking. You're going to have to fight dream killers. Yeah. Yeah, those who, 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 who can't rock with you, they can't go with you, so they're going to try to kill you instead. We're going to have to fight for what God has for us. But the good news is the fight is fixed. When God interrupts your plans, victory is assured. We are champions because we are in him. We are champions because we serve a champion God. God is able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for walking us through Joshua. That as we prepare to claim the promises that you have for us, God, we've been fasting. We've been praying. We've been struggling. We've been laid out. God, you've taken folk home from us. Just like the children of Israel, Lord God, that as they crossed the Jordan and entered into Canaan, Lord, or entered into the promised land, that, God, they had to endure some struggles. But, God, we also realize that if you called us, you will provide and be with us. God, our prayer is that we don't mind being interrupted by your plans. I know that we strategize, God. We try to figure everything out. But, God, we're so grateful that we remember by faith, that what you've done in the past. Father, my prayer is that as we come out of this season, the beginning of this year, spending time with you, that you have equipped us with the mindset of warfare, that you have equipped us with the mindset of possessing, that you have equipped us with the mindset of sharing, that you've equipped us with the mindset, Lord God, of being all that you have called us to be. Forgive us, Lord God, for where we've been ap apathetic. Forgive us, Lord God, where we've just been comfortable. Forgive us, Lord God, when we've been fearful of launching out into the deep end. God, increase our faith. Thank you for this community called Mount Olive. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. God, have your way. As we come out of this period, Father, we're so excited. Now, God, renew our strength. Many of us are tired. Many of us, Lord God, are fearful. Lord, many are just anxious. God, we're weary. 
God, we are weary. But God, we're faithful. And we're holding on to your everlasting hands. God, we pray for this country. We pray for this disease called COVID. Lord, that you would eradicate it. Lord, increase our health. God, we, are, we miss being around each other. There are psychological effects of this pandemic that we have to deal with. There are relational dynamics of the pandemic. There's economic challenges because of the pandemic. God has interrupted our way of life. And maybe, Lord God, maybe, 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 maybe you interrupted our way of life. Maybe that was you interrupting our plans <laughs> so that we could draw closer to you. And so, God, we pray for the saints. We pray for the church of Jesus Christ. Empower and raise up saints to carry the banner. God, realizing that we have a battle on our hands and the battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In the Lord. But the principalities that exist, thank you for prayer warriors in who went to see, Lord God. Thank you for the belief and the trust in you. Trust in the Lord. Now, God, we put our faith and confidence in you. And I believe in God that you will show up and show out. I'm excited to see what you're going to do. I'm excited for the amazing that. I'm excited for all the possibilities that we're going to see come to fruition just because we put our trust in you, just because we put our faith and confidence to launch out into the deep end, across over the Jordan, into the promises you have for us. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for leading us to the point. Thank you, Lord God, for the last couple of years where you have sustained and kept us. Thank you. God, and there's nothing else we can say. We say thank you. And now we are excited because we're not afraid anymore. Because we understand who we are and whose we are. God, we understand that we're yours. And by faith, we're trusted in you. Now, Lord God, have your way like only you can. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless and forth throne of grace. May power, peace, the man forever be his. And all those upon my voice set together. We cannot give the benediction just yet. We have not installed the officers. And so, God, we just thank you for that prayer over that message. Amen. I forgot. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. That's what happens when you're having fun in the Lord. Amen. We want, <laughs> we want to uh, say thank God for his word, power of his word. But we want to draw our attention and move into the section of our service where we install and pray over our newly elected officers for 2022. And as Deacon S. Spellman comes to read off the names, my prayer is that we who put our confidence in these individuals would undergird them, bathe them with prayer and support. And that for these individuals who are being installed, that you would pray to take your job and commitment serious with the Lord. The people are 
trusting and believing in you. You put your trust and belief in God. Where nothing more realize that ministry and ministers mean nothing more than servants. We are servants to the community. We are servants of the Most High. And we ought to be good stewards. Good stewards in our attitude. Good stewards in our heart. Good stewards in our mindsets. Good stewards in our willingness to work through conflict. Not avoid it. Work through it. Conflict could be healthy because it can help us grow. We can be open to new ideas. We don't want conflict that is disruptive and that causes us to be disagreeable. We want exchanging of ideas that figure out solutions. And so for those who are entrusted to do that, we give thanks for you and we pray for you. Amen? Amen. So at this time, we want to ask Deacon S. Spellman to come and present to us our slate of officers for this year. Good morning, everyone, Mount Isla Baptist, those that are virtually or however way you're receiving the service this morning. I will only read the chair, the co-chair, the president, and the vice president. So this is our Mount Isla Baptist Church installation of 2022 officers and leader, Reverend Dr. John O. Page, pastor elect. Our associate ministers are Reverend Donna West, new member class, College Connect. Reverend Ella Hayes, bereaved ministry, renewed hope ministry. Reverend Gwen Burt, youth ministry, praise and worship ministry, advisor, caregivers ministry. The board of deacons, Chairman Deacon Kenneth Potts, Vice Chairman Deacon Milton Nicholson. The Board of Trustees, Chair Christopher Singleton, Vice Chair Sharon Fields. Deaconess Board, Chair Mildred Boy, Vice Chair Denise Potts. Church Clerk, Deaconess Josephine Spellman, Assistant Clerk Church, Lorraine Wilkins. Alter Gill, President Shirley Simmons, Vice President Adelaide Thurston. Education Scholarship, President William Diggs, Vice President Dr. Marion Bob McCoy. Global Missions, President Deaconess Janice Robinson, Vice President Barbara Vaughn. Health and Wellness, Chair Alicia Longaria, Vice Chair Christine Clark. Nurses Ministry, President Donna Lamia, Vice President Kenneth Foote. Hospitality Ministry, Chair Carol C.C. Atkins, Vice President Lorraine Wilkins. Senior Ushers, President Barbara Vaughn, Vice President Catherine Terry. Senior Bible Study, President Marco Henderson, Vice Chair Janine Smallwood. Sunday School Superintendent Carol Parker, Assistant Superintendent Debbie Nicholson. Deaf Awareness Ministry, Chairperson Paula Hunt James, Intercessory Prayer, Leader Deaconess Kathy Hodge, Co Leader Carol Parker, Security Ministry, Director Felix Nelson Jr., Assistant Director Deacon Eugene Boyd. Women's Ministry, Chair Deaconess Debbie Nicholson, Co-Chair Brenda Stoblefield. Women of Worship, President Crystal Harrington, Vice President Catherine Charleston. Youth for Christ Choir, President Makira Polite, Vice President Pierce Sullivan. 
Inspirational Choir, President Shirley Simmons, Vice President Chris Singleton. Men of Praise Choir, President Lonnie Mishu, Vice President Todd McLeod. Young Adult Ministry, President Kayla Lagon. Dance Ministry Leader, Lindsay James Cobb. And that is our installation list for 2022. Thank you. Excuse me, I left someone out. The men's ministry leader is Deacon Willie Thomas. Um, and typically, during this time, we would have a call and response uh, with our officers. Um, we can't do that in a virtual setting and space. Uh, but we do have present with us uh, our newly appointed chairperson of our trustee board and brother Chris Singleton. We also have with us newly uh, appointed chairperson of our diaconate and brother Kenneth Potts. Could I ask you guys, you gentlemen, to come and stand over here as representation? Um, I don't know if, are there any other, off Kayla, if you could come down and stand. Do we have any other newly appointed? Deacon S. Spellman, if you will come. You guys can spread out a little bit. Amen. And we're just going to ask that, um, and we're going to pray over, and you all just represent the congregation. Amen. Um, in the name of, the Jesus, of Jesus Christ and the authority of this church, I extend to you the right hand of fellowship, recognizing that God has called you to serve the fellowship of Mount Olive Baptist Church. May God bless you in the ministry which you now share with us all. Remembering in Peter's words, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. For whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belongs the glory and all the power forever and ever. And may God, who has begun this good work in you, give you the grace to complete it and serve God's people in joy and in peace. Virtually, I extend the right hand of fellowship to everyone who has been installed. God, we pray over these officers now. Grant them discernment and wisdom. Father, fill them up with a double portion of your anointing. Lord God, allow everything that they do in your service be filled and oily with your anointing. God, my prayer is that these leaders will walk through the congregation, being examples, being lights, stirring up, encouraging, stirring up, insp inspiring new thought and vision, Lord God. God, that we will not be fearful to step out by faith. God, we pray for a spirit of unity. Unify us, Lord God, in deed and action that we may glorify you in all that we say and do. God, thank you for these now installed leaders. Bless them, Lord God, as they serve us. Fill them up with everything that they need. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ and the people of God said together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. It is now time for the benediction. Amen. Let us be encouraged. Let us be an encouraging, have encouraging words. Let us be an encouragement to our newly installed officers. I look forward to working with you as we are going in uncharted waters, as we are claiming that which God has for us, as we are implementing new strategies right here at, at Mount Olive, new technology and new ministries and re revamping things. Uh, I am just super excited. We don't have to be fearful anymore, y'all. Amen. We can, we can approach this thing with confidence. We can approach uh, uh, having to walk this journey, these uncharted waters with confidence because we, we serve a, a wonderful God. We serve a wonderful God who has a good track record. He had a great track record before the pandemic. Had a good track record during the pandemic. And I look forward to seeing what he's going to do next. As we are entering into this new season, this new era of Mount Olive, be strong and courageous. Be filled with confidence, confidence in God, not confidence in ourselves and our own abilities. But I'm believing that the best is yet to come. Amen? We have the ability now to impact and affect more than we ever had before. I know things may not look like it and seem like it. But we claim that by faith. Looking forward to taking care of the bylaws and getting them up to speed and current and relevant. Looking forward to getting back to fellowshipping and doing those wonderful things of coming together and dining together and eating together. Looking forward to all those things. Looking forward to my installation. Maybe I can get that pastor elect off my name. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> Looking forward to those celebrations. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Amen. Don't let the snow discourage you. Amen. Hopefully you took the time out to enjoy God's blessings of rest. Amen. And hot chocolate and all that good stuff. I saw a whole lot of different cooking on uh, Facebook. Folks were making chili. And I said, ooh, these folks know how to prepare themselves, boy. I was talking buku trash, too, about snow here. Uh, because on Friday, when they were saying, you know, it was snowing, uh, Jerry called, she said, well, what are we going to do about the funeral? I said, it ain't doing nothing outside yet. I said, this little punk snow, this ain't nothing. You know, I was up in Massachusetts. I'm used to, you know what I mean? I, I'm used to walking through. And then uh, I woke up the next day, and I said, well, I was talking too, talking too much trash, <laughs> too soon. <soul." laughs> anyway, have fun. Enjoy the football games. Amen. Enjoy fellowship. Enjoy life. Amen. You deserve it. Amen. We look forward to the call tonight uh, where we'll complete our fasting and prayer. Amen. And, and, and we look forward to ooh, a good burger tomorrow. Anybody want to come get a burger with me? Call me. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you. And we're so grateful, Lord God, for your sense of humor. We're thankful for everything that you allow us to experience. God, bless us like only you can. Keep us like only you can. And we'll continue to give you the praise, honor, and glory. Now, Lord God, go out there and meet us where we are. Meet each and every need. For those, Lord God, who uh, have asked that question, what must I do to unite with the church? What must I do to unite with Christ? God, inspire them to call the church, email us. God, accept you right where they are. There is no secret to salvation. For if we believe with our mouth and confess with our hearts, you said we would be saved and delivered. God, continue to do that. Restore relationships. Have your way. Mend hearts. God, give us a spirit of joy as we go into these new seasons of our life. This is our prayer. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us fathers before his throne of grace. May power, peace, dominion forever be his. And all those up under my voice said together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Amen. Bye-bye.